earlier in the week, um, I did talk about Greenwald getting uh, censored by The Intercept, right? So if you're unfamiliar with the story, a little recap of what happened is Glenn Greenwald wrote an article about Joe and Hunter Biden that The Intercept, uh, the editorial team at The Intercept, uh, which is his publication. He is a, co a co-founder of First Look Media and The Intercept, basically said that they will not run it. Um, he has to do a lot of changes, specifically talking about um, corruption. He has to get rid of the the corruption angle uh, of the Bidens, right? That he he basically said like you can't you can't say that the Bidens are corrupt. There, you that that allegation doesn't stick. Uh, we're we're not happy that you're saying certain things like that. <laughs> um, and I did check out the emails uh, with uh, that that they said too, and I'll I'll talk about those towards the end of it. It's it's nothing like earth shattering or or anything like that. It's basically what we just talked about. When we can look at some of the specifics um, toward towards the end of the segment here. But uh, what I wanted to do was look at the article itself that he wrote right i think that's that's important when whenever you have um issues dealing with censorship like this uh it's important to look at it and say well what the hell did this person say that needed to be retracted or that needed to be so editorialized were they going over the top were they you know just making up a bunch of shit like what was going on so I did, and it's a. I did read it. It's a very long, extensive article that I highly recommend you guys go check out as well. It's on Glenn Greenwald's Substack, so it's greenwald.substack.com, and it's the uh, article on Joe and Hunter Biden censored. That's the title of the article that he released, and basically, I mean, it's a very long, in-depth article that basically talks about and reveals how Hunter Biden was using the Biden name as a uh, point of prestige uh, to work on energy deals in Ukraine and China, right? Like, basically, he was going in and, you know, like, the <laughs> going into these meetings and be like, do you know who my dad is? America's Joe Biden. That's who my fucking dad is, all right? You'll do whatever the fuck we tell you to. And yes, he did sound like uh, an 80s wrestler when he did it. That's that's part of the controversy is why did he sound like an 80s wrestler? And, uh, you know, cocaine is uh, it's a it's a drug that can make you sound like an 80s wrestler if you do too much of it. Now, the other thing he points out, <laughs> the other thing Greenwald points out, and this was kind of known. Um, and again, it, it, it was known, but not really addressed. A lot of this stuff was like we we figured it out, but we never really talked about it. Um, because I think there's a fascination with needing Joe Biden to be this like tried and true American figure that's like better than Donald Trump because he speaks in semi full sentences uh, that that only end with racism. You know, it's not like racism is just constantly being spurted out. It's just like he'll say a bunch of shit and then he'll be like black people aren't diverse, but the Latinos are like, you know, it's at the very end. And that's respectable. And that's bringing dignity back into the White House to say that black people aren't diverse. Anyway, uh, <laughs> one of the things that was pointed out was uh, Hunter Biden was making $50,000 a month to sit on the board of this energy company in Ukraine. Uh, and, you know, and, and he got this job when Biden was VP. So so the, the thought is that there was some nepotism involved, right? Like Biden leveraged his power of VP to get him uh, a seat on this energy company's board in Ukraine. A job that I don't think Hunter Biden was particularly like um, qualified for. I'm not sure if he was. Uh, and while <laughs> while that was happening, right, while this uh, while Hunter Biden gets to d be on the board of an energy company when he doesn't have any experience in the field at all uh, in America, uh, there was a fight over Dapple in North Dakota where the police were using things like sound and water cannons and beating protesters. And that all happened under the Obama and Biden administration. 
just in case anybody forgot, while Joe Biden was putting his son on the board of an energy company in the Ukraine, in America, Joe Biden and Barack Obama were staying virtually silent and saying almost nothing about what was happening to the protesters in North Dakota when they were when they were basically fighting a pipeline that was going to poison their water supply that was going over uh, sacred ground. And they they were just not they weren't going to say anything about it at all. They were just going to install Hunter Biden into this thing. And that's and that's their big thing. Right. That they and they were but they were but they were like, we need to do something about climate change. Well, there's a fucking fight happening to do something about climate change. Uh, and you're ignoring it. So the other thing that that um, Greenwald points out is uh, VP Biden, Vice President Biden, used his political muscle to coerce the then president of Ukraine, uh, Poroshenko, to replace one of the top prosecutors in Ukraine. Um, and then the second that happened, uh, and this top prosecutor that was going to get replaced, this this Biden favorite prosecutor in Ukraine, had no experience with the law at all, like zero experience <laughs> with the law, period. Like he just didn't have any experience with it. Uh, and the second that they did, the, the, you know, Ukraine got a billion dollars in aid that they uh, that they needed, that the United States was saying that they would. So all of this kind of shows um a level of political corruption from the Biden administration right and there's all these similarities between the Biden family and Trump's family and stuff like that and corporate media is staying silent on it and a lot of what they did was they they were trying to delegitimize uh where this information was coming from oh it was this laptop and uh, you know the FBI isn't gonna uh, you know they, they said that oh Russia might be involved but then they found out that Russia is not involved because that's the first thing America does uh nowadays is is when something goes wrong especially with the Democratic Party and the Democratic Party is revealed to be corrupt which they are uh you know the they're you know, the they're just like well it's it's got to be Russia it can't be the Democrats. It's got to be right. Have you not seen the Rocky cinemas? The whole Rocky franchise talks about how you have to punch Russians in the face, and that's the only way to beat Russia. Or else they will come here and they will steal elections and they will make Joe Biden say racist things. He's not racist. The Russians. The Russians. And that's the whole statement. But that's that's part of the problem that um, that the media was doing is that they weren't giving this thing any sort of uh, you know serious weight uh, and doing the job of a journalist, which is to dig and ask questions, which is what Glenn Greenwald did and and wrote this article basically pointing out the corruption between uh, within within the Biden family, right? And uh, the question ends up becoming why was the story censored? Why didn't why didn't the people at the Intercept, the 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 editors in chief? Uh, at the intercept, not let one of the co-founders, uh, who's contractually obligated not to be censored, like he he can't be like you can't just deny an article that Glenn Greenwald wants to write at the intercept, which is, which is I guess I mean that's fair, right? <laughs> the point of the point of the intercept, as he wrote in one of the emails, was the was that he the the writers, the journalists. We're not going to be censored by their editors. Their their work was not going to be hyper editorialized, right? So. What the editors are looking for is is grammatical claims or uh, personalized opinions uh, about particular politicians or particular figures that they talk about. Uh, so, you know, if a journalist is is uh, is also a climate change activist and starts writing about what's going on within the climate change movement, uh, but all, but then says, well, Exxon is uh, a bag of dicks. They are a giant bag of uh, severed penises. That's the only description I have. Well, then Glenn Greenwald's going to be like, this is probably a bit much and doesn't really have anything to do with the story. Um, whereas a comedian can say Exxon is a bag of dicks. Uh, and it's funny and true. Uh, so, <laughs> um, but really what this shows is blatant corruption from from the Biden end of things, right? Uh, Hunter Biden using the weight of Joe Biden's name to try to get energy deals, try to uh, leverage these big, big 
energy deals, right? Well, and that basically sounds like what what the Trump family does. They they leverage their name. That's like basically all they have. J Donald Trump is is a master of fucking bankruptcy. Like he that that's his thing. That's what he does. He builds companies and makes them go bankrupt, and then he cashes out at the end. That's like his thing, right? Uh, and and what does he sell? He sells his name. His name goes on everything. Like that's the, that's the only big brand that he has. That's the product he's selling. He's not selling a casino. He's selling his name, and that's what Hunter Biden was doing in this instance by going to various companies and and these energy companies in China and being like, "Dude, I'm 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 America's Joe Biden's kid." So I am America's Hunter Biden, motherfucker. And then he kisses his bicep, and it's very confusing when he does that. So the other, and and it just it just again goes to show how close these two families really are, right? The Bidens and the Trumps. They become these these American oligarchical families that we are supposed to fawn over. These they they become like the royal family of America. That's basically what they kind of become. Like we have this fawning adoration towards royalty because, oh, look at the pearls and the crown and the dress and the this and the, and isn't that what we do with a bunch of the politicians' families here? Like, isn't that what we, how we fawn over the Obamas? Isn't that how we fawn over Joe, the, the, the Bidens and the Clintons? Like, like they show up on The Daily Show and they're just like, who are you wearing? Oh, my God, you have such a delightful smile. Wasn't Joma a bitch? Don't answer that. That's crazy. It's just nuts. You're so classy. Like, you know, and then they all get podcasts of their own. But that's what <laughs> that's what happens is like there's all this is revealing. One of the major things this article reveals is that all of these families, all of these dynasties are the corporate oligarchy. They are the royalty in America and they all behave virtually the same way because they have this projected status. They get to go and do whatever they want. They get to tout their name. They get to hold politicians hostage. And say, this is who you're going to put as your top prosecutor. So whenever we do back backdoor shady deals and whenever we control the, you know, whenever we have deals with, uh, with the energy supply in your country, these people are going to let us do it without any question. Of course, Peter Poroshenko is no longer the president of, uh, of Ukraine. There's a gentleman by the name of Zelensky that won. Who was uh, who's a comedian. They got a comedian to be president. Uh, a left-wing populist comedian <laughs> to be president. And one, I mean, a, again, like once this has been revealed, it basically shows um, that one side is not better than the other side, right? The, it, it's, it's, it's two sides of the same coin, right? Like, do you want the head side? which is which is somewhat intellectual and is definitely going to gaslight the shit out of you. Uh, but they're going to do it in like an academic way. Or do you want uh, the asshole? Do you want the tails? Do you want the butthole side of it? And a lot of Americans were like, what if we have a different coin? Can we have a different coin? It's like, wait a minute. That's from that Russian wallet, isn't it? That is a Russian wallet coin. Is that what you're doing? This is America and we only have one coin. That's it. And at this point, it's like the liberals and Democrats are running out of excuses. Like, how? what is the excuse for this? Where are the statements from the Democrats for what happened? Not, not just what was revealed in this article, but what happened to Glenn Greenwald. Why aren't they coming out and making a statement? And I addressed this earlier this week when I uh, put out put up one of the you know the ranty videos from my car, right? One of the other road reflections that I did where I, I, that was the big thing. Jim Acosta gets thrown out of the press room and, you know, we we spent two and a half weeks on every fucking cable news channel talking about it. What a travesty. Oh, my God. Freedom of press. Oh, this is censorship. Oh, this is bullshit. This is how authoritarians behave. And under the same thing, we write a Joe Biden article and it can't come out because, well, it's going to make Joe Biden look bad. It's going to make his family look bad. It's going to make his family look like a bunch of assholes. And they don't and, and they don't do anything about it. <clears throat> so the Democrats can continue their silence and there's no statement from Joe Biden about this. 
There is no apology, right? To come out and say, well, you know, I was trying to help my son. He was going through a tough time. I thought this would be good for him. I thought this would be good experience. Uh, now that all this has come out, I think, you know, Hunter has some explaining to do something. If this dude is all about healing the country, that's what uh, that's what all the liberals tell me, right? Is is well, Joe Biden is going to heal the country. The, the the election of Joe Biden is is uh, you know it's going to heal the nation. Well, he has an opportunity to do that right now. Is to come out and say what happened to Glenn Greenwald should not be happening. If if there is something from my past that I did that's going to be revealed, uh, that is a journalist's job. That is their duty. They are doing what what they're supposed to do, uh, and I will apologize and try to correct my behavior on a policy and legislative level when I hold the most powerful office in the country, which you can make the argument that the president is not the most powerful person <laughs> in the country. And, and you can definitely make that argument because I think Mitch McConnell, who who basically kills any sort of bill that helps the people, uh, might be more powerful than uh, the president himself. But, uh, you know, that that's not coming. It, it, the, the point I'm trying to make is that's not coming. That's the we're 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 not getting the Joe Biden apology. Um, Joe Biden is will, won't even apologize for the crime bill, which it, it exploded the prison industrial complex. It made it, um, it made it even more powerful. It put innocent people in prison. It continued to put innocent people in prison, people of color in prison. It it created the police brutality problem that we have today. And he ignores all of that. He doesn't address it. He doesn't talk about it. And he talks about how proud he is that he wrote the bill. And this is some shit that he was be, he's been pitching. The crime bill went out when uh, went out in ninety four, but he was pitching shit like this since the, the Nixon administration. So I mean, that's a consistent record. Uh, since the Nixon administration, like he basically was in line with with Nixon's plan with the war on drugs, which was specifically to destabilize black communities and anti-war communities. That was revealed by John Ehrlichman uh, in an interview um, that that's specifically what the Nixon administration was trying to do with the war on drugs. Now, uh, Greenwald did question the Biden administration. There was a couple questions that I wanted to share with you guys today. Let me pull this up here. Make sure I share the right tab. Ba, 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 ba. I think this is it. Yeah. Okay. So this is some of the some of the questions that that Greenwald asked um, the Biden uh, Biden camp. There, he said whether the he he claims any emails or texts are fabricated, and if so, with specific ones. Fair question, right? You want to ask which one, uh, which one they believe is is untrue and why. Uh, whether he knows if Hunter did indeed drop off the the laptops at the Delaware repair store, which is a big deal. That that's one of the things that. Uh, that people argue are, are are currently arguing over is whether it was Hunter Biden that dropped off uh, or was it somebody else, you know, to 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 claim the credibility of this laptop itself, uh, which has revealed all this information. Whether Hunter Biden, Hunter ever asked him to meet with Burisma executives or whether he, in fact, did so. Whether Biden ever knew about business proposals in Ukraine or China being pursued by his son and brother, in which Biden was proposed was a proposed participant, right? So, so that's what they were. The, the the Biden kids, both of them, James and Hunter Biden, went to China and Ukraine, um, and they were pursuing these deals on behalf of Joe Biden. Is basically what they were saying, <clears throat> and. Uh, this is one of the bigger ones, is how Biden could justify so much energy as vice president demanding that the Ukrainian general prosecutor be fired and why the replacement, uh, Yuri, I'm gonna, hopefully that's properly, Lutsenko, someone who had no experience in law, was the crony of Ukrainian President uh, Peter Poroshenko and himself had a history of corruption allegation, was acceptable if Biden's goal was really to fight corruption in Ukraine rather than benefit Burisma or control Ukrainian internal affairs for some other objective, right? Which are all fair questions that I think a journalist should ask a politician, especially a politician that talks about how much he's against corruption, how much he hates corruption, how much he doesn't want this and doesn't want, and, and then he basically puts one of the most corrupt politicians in charge of a different country. This is like regime change 
in, without having a war. It's it's it, this is like a Cold War regime change, right? This is like CIA internal tactics, spy games type shit. That <laughs> that's that's what Biden was doing. It was just like this. We got to get rid of corruption. We're gonna do that by adding more corruption. That's what we're we're fighting fire with fire, corruption with corruption. That's how it's got to be done. Okay, look, man, come on. <laughs> That's what he always does. Come on. It's, you know, uh, they, they said that they were going to, uh, answer the questions and then, um, and then they never did. Uh, right. So, so that was <laughs> part of the problem is, is that the Biden administration just didn't talk about, um, didn't talk about the corruption. They, they didn't talk about any of those questions. Some of those questions were like easy, um, yes or no kind of questions, uh, you know, is like, hey, did you know about your kid? Did you know that your kid's doing stuff like this? Uh, and that could have been like, no, I had no idea. I'm actually going to talk to him now because this seems really crazy and really fucked up that this is happening. Um, but it's it's part of what a journalist is supposed to do. And what corporate media did is basically look at it and say, this is going to hurt Biden's chance to become a president. So here's the other thing is Biden's already president now. So, I mean, where, where are they at? Right. Like, so now Biden can answer some of these questions. <coughs> I mean, yes, Donald Trump is not is, is threatening to not leave the office. And I think there's. um <laughs> I just have this. I, I just got this image in my head of like uh, MPD, uh, and I'll tell you where this image comes from. I was I was in Chicago, and uh, all these flights had been delayed because there was a tornado outside O'Hare, and they can't like you know it's like you can't fly through a tornado, and and the flight had been delayed. And I was I was flying to New Orleans to do some gigs, and I was like I was like this close to to just not being able to make the gig. <laughs> But, you know, everybody like our plane comes in, everybody's cheering at the airport and this and this old lady like rushes to the front and they were like, hey, give us a little bit. We're going to turn over the plane as quickly as possible. Right. Uh, we're going to clean and we're going to get everything. We're, we're going to get like the drinks and everything restocked on the plane. <clears throat> so give us a little bit. It's going to take 10 minutes max. We got extra staff to get this done because we want to get you to your destination as quickly as possible. And this old lady fucking loses her shit and starts screaming screaming at the person behind the desk who has no control over how and when this plane is going to leave <laughs> uh and and then i see these cops right like because they do it i guess these cops were doing a check of the plane and i see these cops in the back of the plane hear something and they run through the plane and they grab her and she fights the cops. And basically what happened is there was uh, four cops that had to take this old lady out of the airport because she was like threatening to assault one of the people behind the counter. <laughs> there was like one person on each arm and each leg like carrying her out of the airport and she was yelling. It was fucking nuts. That's what I think. Uh, that's the image that came to my head when uh, on on inauguration day. Uh, or whatever move-in day. When's move-in day for the president? Why are we talking about move-in day for the president? Um, whenever Joe Biden has to move his shit in, whenever that presidential U-Haul fucking shows up, <laughs> I think that's what's going to happen. There's going to be like one fucking MP, Metro Police Department cop that's going to be like carry Trump out. He's like, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, sir. But it's like the image in my head is literally uh, the that woman uh, but with Trump's face, I I, I face swap Trump uh, onto that old lady from the Chicago airport from five years ago. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but the, my, my point being, this is a very loud roundabout way of saying at this point, I think Biden should be uh, talking about these this 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 corruption um controversy i think he should be talking about what happened to glenn greenwald if he really stands for freedom of the press if he really stands for um you know journalistic integrity then he should address what happened at the intercept 
and this article specifically and said that nobody should be firing or have being forced to resign through via censorship, you know, uh, over articles written written about me and my record and so on. But he's not going to um, because, again, he's going to be a crypto fascist. And by basically saying nothing, he can make an argument that, well, at least I didn't say uh, you know, fake news, fake news. I just didn't say anything at all. But silence is a political statement. Silence itself is a statement. The fact that you're not saying anything about it tells me that, yeah, you're fine with what happened. You're still complicit in in the censorship of a real, uh, real journalist, of one of the best journalists around that has revealed so much other corruption, including Brazil's legitimate outright fascist leader Jair Bolsonaro uh, and has his had him, him and his husband and his family's life threatened in that country like this is a dude Glenn Greenwald is one of like the most salt of the earth journalists around that like knows what the fuck the job of a journalist is and he was forced to resign because he oh he dared talk about the Democratic Party in a negative way The Republicans already are fine with this sort of authoritarianism uh, of of discrediting members of the press. They're fine with it. But this is coming from the Democratic side now. And the way that the Democratic Party shows that they're fine with it is by just staying quiet. They don't say anything about it. They're just like, hush, hush, don't worry about it. If you really want to push Joe Biden to the left, you fucking liberals read that article and make him address what happened make him address the content of the article and the aftermath of it don't also stay silent and be complicit with the democratic party hey what's up everybody thank you guys so much for checking out this video if you enjoyed the content in this video make sure you like subscribe and share my content is highly suppressed because this is not topics of conversation that uh, that the corporate mainstream media really wants to 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 address here so make sure you like share and subscribe uh sign up for my email list uh that way you'll get weekly uh, uh, emails with all of the podcasts and all of the videos that i put out there um, and make sure you go to my website and follow me there, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. That's going to be your one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. See you in the next video.